Hello everybody, uh, my name is Simon Hausenbagger and I'm here today to talk to you about the importance of learning. I've got some uh, wonderful slides to run through, um, starting with a uh, very uh, sort of standard introduction. So my name is Simon, I've worked for LinkedIn for five years, uh, helping their uh, customers succeed with uh, LinkedIn learning. Um, I've done that, uh, you know, when I started at LinkedIn Learning, there were, there were eight CSMs, uh, Customer Success Managers. Uh, there's now uh, an organisation of 70 with, with several layers and a director looking after a, a huge uh, customer base. So we've grown a, a lot and I've learned a lot in that time. Uh, you know, I've also... Um, worked in learning and development before I came to LinkedIn. So I did about 10 years of um, L&D uh, before I joined LinkedIn and, um, and loved it, absolutely loved it. I did everything, um, technical training, uh, rolling out uh, onboarding programs all the way through to uh, leadership and management development. But in LinkedIn, when introducing yourself, uh, when a new person is brought onto the scene or or even when a, an, an established individual uh, like myself is introduced to a new group of people, the question they ask is, what isn't on your LinkedIn profile? So I'll tell you what, what the, my answer to that is. I'd love you to think about what yours is because it's a great um, conversation starter. My, my go-to answer is normally, uh, I have all the available driving licenses in this country, apart from the uh, apart from the bus license. So I can drive uh, cars, obviously, uh, motorbikes, any type, uh, no restrictions, uh, lorries, all the way up to articulated lorries, you know, the 40 ton monsters. And, uh, you know, thinking about it, uh, I don't think they'd let me loose on, on any of those apart from a car <laughs> now. So uh, useful to have them, but yeah, I, I, I sort of went on a, Collecting, uh, collecting spiral. It's also really difficult to record a presentation like this. You know, I now have huge respect for uh, for Luan, for you know, who's done this for LinkedIn a, a fair few times. Um, I'd liken it to shouting, you know, into a into a massive empty room, which uh, which let's be honest doesn't sound or like or feel like healthy behaviour. Uh, but nevertheless, let's get stuck in because I've got some uh, I've got some great stuff to cover off with you today. Starting with oh, it's great stuff. Starting with a, a standard five point agenda. Um, it's useful for me, I think, and, and useful for you to, to just understand that you know my plan today is to talk to you about the importance of lifelong learning. Moving on to what LinkedIn learning is. And then taking a look at how we create our content, like the mechanics behind that process, uh, how you might then access our platform, and finishing with my personal recommendations from the con from the uh, from the platform itself. So let's start with some scene setting. Firstly, according to the World Economic Forum, uh, a report published in October last year, the rapid acceleration of automation and the economic uncertainty caused by the pandemic will shift the division of labour uh, between humans and machines. And it's going to cause 85 million jobs to be displaced. That sounds fairly stark, uh, but there are also going to be 97 million new ones created by 2025. That's in four years, four years time. You know, the World Economic Forum also has a stat that I love. Um, which is 65% of primary school children will start in a job that hasn't even been invented yet. Can you imagine that? So, you know, no surprise to see that there's been a 15% increase uh, in focus on upskilling and reskilling among L&D professionals uh, in, in organisations. You know, you know, the people who look after your professional uh, education, they are now focused on this. But you, uh, you still have a job, you still have a job personally to continue uh, educating yourself throughout your career. So let's move on to like why lifelong learning is important, you know, following on from that, the increased focus on upskilling and reskilling 
folk feeds in to a working environment that people want to stay at and grow within. It shouldn't be a huge surprise that people spend longer at companies that invest in them via learning and development, uh, learning and growth opportunities. When I say growth opportunities, actually, specifically, because you know, formal and informal learning are, are really important. But so is ensuring your learning experience is blended and you have opportunities to act up, get involved, make safe, make safe mistakes, you know, shadow others, you know, among lots of, of other things. And then, uh, you know, lastly, why lifelong learning? You're doing it already. Anyway, I know you are. I bet almost all of you right now are using either a fancy iPhone or a fancy Android phone. And who taught you how to use it? No one, right? You learn it yourself, a bit hard, a bit of Googling, maybe watched a video. Do you all eat exactly the same dinners every night? I'm sure you don't. I'm sure there's lots of us among uh, the, the people watching this who experiment with flavors and combinations. And why? You know, because it's excited and it's fun and it's tasty. But don't also forget that it's learning. And then, uh, you know, who here has felt stressed? Stressed so much you need help. Stressed and upset to the point where you seek help. You're seeking help and advice at that point to learn. Uh, learn coping strategies, uh, options, opportunities, answers, support. Still learning. You're all lifelong learners already. You just didn't know it. And now is the time to apply some of those skills to the gaps that might be uh, widening in your industry, in your team, in your role, or more positively, to make you more strategic or more impactful, more effective in the work you do. So, you know, LinkedIn Learning is one of the platforms you can turn to at this point. So let's talk about that. So. LinkedIn Learning is one of the leading providers of online learning, with over 16,000 courses taught by real world experts uh, like Luem. And it grows by over 30 courses a week. If you want a sneak peek at the courses, then connect with me on LinkedIn and you'll see my posts. I share the new courses every week. You can also uh, see the type of organizations you're working with from these wonderful uh, logos that you can see. Um, and I always say to my friends, just check, check that your, uh, you, your work isn't providing it before you sign up. You know, save yourself some money. And my favourite aspect is you can download content and watch it offline. You know, I used to do it on my train commute, which is one hour and 45 minutes from start to stop. And I had a, I had a habit of watching Lil, that's our uh, internal pet name for LinkedIn learning, Lil. Um, to work so i'd watch on the way to work and then i'd watch, net, watch netflix on the return i watched over a hundred hours of content in a year in this way and i even uh, wrote a blog on it which you can find on my profile so you know have a look for that as well we have a, we have a fantastic platform that recommends content relevant uh, to you powered by linkedin insights uh, which segues nicely into my next slide There we go, look at that. So uh, what insights, what, what am I talking about when I say insights? Well, we have what, I, uh, what we call the economic graph. You know, it's a view of the wider LinkedIn ecosystem driven by our members, all 740 million of them, probably more now. So we have three joining every second. We have 57 million companies, all created by people who work for them. You know, we don't auto create companies. These have all got a diligent person, perhaps a social media guru, maybe a, a marketing man or woman in the office working behind the scenes, scenes to create those company pages. 14 million jobs, you know, advertised worldwide. In the UK, we have anywhere between 900,000 and 1.4 million jobs live on our platform at any one time. Uh, 38,000 skills that you can self-elect onto your profile. You know, the part where you say, yes, I'm good at Excel. I'm going to put that on my profile. I'm good at Excel. 
And the endorsement piece, you know, when someone comes along and says, oh, they are good at Excel, click, thumbs up. Well, those thumbs up, that, those endorsements, they number in the billions. You know, and lastly, we've got 120,000 schools, colleges, universities, all, you know, all with huge alumni networks, all powered by our platform. Yeah, this is a very big, um, very real map of the working world. Ever growing, ever changing, constantly up to date. And it informs our content robot, our course recommendations, and our unparalleled talent insights. So enter LinkedIn Learning. That's not LinkedIn Learning, that's a fancy little graphic, but it's gonna help me describe LinkedIn Learning, I hope. We call LinkedIn Learning the intelligent skill building platform. Uh, we talk about it empowering you to develop the right skills to grow your career. And we do this in three ways. Uh, number one, we personalize content using the LinkedIn AI to make it easier for you to discover the content that you need. Two, we connect learners in community-based learning experiences with colleagues, peers, and experts and can learn from each other and build new skills. You know, and, and three, we also help companies, obviously, by <laughs> informing their L&D strategy uh, with insights on skill development, which help them decide where to expend their energy, what content should they curate. And powering this flywheel, I think they call it a flywheel, uh, is the data and insights from the economic graph that we just saw. You know, I've now got a, a few very corporate slides actually uh, to, to just to build on each of these areas because I think it's important. Um, so let's let's run through some of those quickly. Firstly, the personalization. We help you find the right content. It, it's pretty important when there's 16,000 courses to pick from. It would be like Netflix paralysis, you know? And we aim, like Netflix does, to be honest, to avoid this. We ensure you get a high, hyper personalized experience. Everybody's homepage will look different depending on who they are and what they do. We blend the content into LinkedIn.com as well. So you can search for and watch content in LinkedIn.com fully without having to jump into Lil. You can even find someone in LinkedIn, someone's profile who you like, you admire, they're in a position you would like to be in. And on the side of their profile will be content recommendations, uh, recommendations to help you bridge the gap. Uh, we also have some learning paths. Learning paths are typically built to help you uh, learn a skill or change a role. So we have pathways like become a, a business analyst, or analyst, business analyst, or learn the guitar. You know, so we've got those kind of different options in the in the platform as well. And like I said, we add loads of content every week. We have a platform that supports social learning. You know, the opportunity to share experiences whilst learning is very valuable. And with learning groups, Q&A, watch party, and even live events in the platform, we have a really strong offering that, uh, that now pushes you to talk to other humans about your learning. Uh, a, a skill I hope we haven't lost over this uh, protract, protracted pandemic. And it's no great surprise that we also additionally provide support for organisations with data from both learner behaviour and insights from the platform, link, uh, LinkedIn.com and LinkedIn Learning, that helps L&D professionals make decisions on when to, when to exert their energy and, and feeds into the success of their initiatives. So LinkedIn Learning, let's move on to content creation because it's, you know, content is so important. So let's talk about that process. We follow instructional instructional design principles for the creation of content. That's a very American term, but it, it adequately describes how we set about making content that's right for the learner. So we always think about that in five different lenses. So learner first, we create content driven by who the learner is, what skills they'll need uh, to be productive and what skills they'll need to be successful. We uh, create content with intentional instruction. You know, carefully considering the choices uh, that impact instruction, we align production with clearly defined business objectives, uh, learner goals, expectations, and feeding into this is, you know, scope. 
delivery, you know, how are they going to watch it, video, audio, mobile, and aesthetics, lots of different factors. So uh, intentional instruction is important. We have a uh, clear and direct uh, content. You know, we value our learners' time. We seek to organize content in a focused, clear pathway, explaining the what, how, and most importantly, the why. It's really difficult to do that, real skill to take something very complex and, uh, and build a simple pathway, removing the barriers to learning. But we've got a lot of experience in doing that. We want our content to uh, enact immediate impact. You know, we teach practical relevant skills that learners can apply uh, immediately. We prompt the learner to take action and provide opportunities for real world application. And, and we, we believe that you learn from our courses and can use our courses immediately. And then lastly, that authentic connection is we always seek to create a personal one-to-one -one connection by making content that's credible, inclusive, compassionate, and supportive. We've been making content for 26 years. We started by creating content onto VHS tapes and sending it out with a book. Very quickly, um, lynda.com moved into putting content online. And LinkedIn's acquisition of lynda.com was very successful. We had very little fallout from the individuals we brought on board. We run the largest recording studios in the world outside of Hollywood. And actually we have positioned them just north of Hollywood in Carpinteria. Uh, we also have recording studios in Graz in Austria. And we have a smaller recording studio in Japan. We produce over two and a half thousand courses each week. No, each year. That'd be nice, each week, uh, each year. And, um, and I think we do a really good job with the content. We have a very broad library. Uh, we often describe, like this is a good example, this, this sort of technology piece of code to metal. You know, as you can see here, code, web development to metal, networking and building the cages for computers, you know. But the library has depth as well. 56% of the content on the platform is intermediate and advanced compared to only 34% being beginner or beginner intermediate. And those of you doing the quick maths, you'll know are uh, missing some percentage points there. So there are, there's a 3% um, of courses uh, that are des designated general and don't have a level. How do you access? Well, you ask your organization first if they have it. Uh, no point in signing up if they provide it for free. Uh, and if not, you can simply go to linkedin.com forward slash learning and sign up. Start a free trial, set a reminder five days before the end of the free trial uh, and decide if you want to keep it. Think of it like a gym membership for the mind. And when you're signed up, it's very easy to access directly from linkedin.com. So what courses would I recommend? Well, it's my favourite bit of this, uh, content recommendations. You know, I love LinkedIn Learning, uh, not just because I work for them, but because of all the time I spent watching the content. So obviously, first, I have to highlight Luanne's course, uh, Marketing Your Event, an experience which uh, I'm sure played a part in the organisation of this event. And now normally I'd throw up a bunch of useful and pointed recommendations based on essential business skills, you know, things like marketing and sales and leadership emotional intelligence and resilience but instead I wanted to highlight some of our more unusual content you know really speaking to the uh, breadth of the library so there's Helvetica that's a, a documentary for, for designers on the creation of the Helvetica font I watched it and I found it to be quite absorbing you know I'm not a designer but I really I really liked it and if you need help understanding the creative process there is a separate course where John Cleese talks about uh, understanding the creative process, which might help. There's uh, 32 ways to make extra money, it's one of my favourites. A fantastic course on the growing side hustle market. It's the American term for a second job. Uh, with lots of real life stories and examples of where people have found success. Uh, you could partner that course with 43 ideas for starting a side business, it's a second course. And then you've got uh, 75 excellent pieces of advice for getting started in your dream. And then lastly, there's the uh, Monster Drawing Workshop. You know, an excellent course, 
perfect to watch alongside your kids uh, or anyone with a keen interest in monsters. And if you're struggling with, uh, with drawing, then there's always the 21 day drawing challenge for extra help. So thank you uh, for today. Uh, I'm looking forward to all your questions and uh, I really hope you found this beneficial. Uh, I enjoyed it, even though uh, there's no one here, <laughs> but I, I know that this will be beneficial for lots of people. So thank you very much. And um, I have a slide that says that, so why not throw it up? Look, look at that, isn't that wonderful? So thank you once again, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the Q&A.